Hello there, YouTube. I hope all y'all are having a blessed day. Oh, it has been quite a week. You can see the white monstrosity behind me. That is my new sewing table. It took me forever to get that thing put together. And I had the boys flip it upside down for me today while they were here mowing. So I just have to move everything. But my back is absolutely dead. So I had to stop at assembling the rows. Uh, assembling the blocks together into rows. Next time we will sew the rows together and the time after that we will do the border. And again this is all wonky log cabin quilt as you go. When you put that last stitch on the border you're done. There's nothing else that you have to do. It's fini. Let's get over to the cutting table and let's get started. All right, you can see I have all 20 of my blocks here. Again, I am making a small quilt. I'm making a four by five block layout. What I'm going to do, and this, this may seem a little convoluted, but the first thing I want to do is get these close to what I want to work with. And I can see that I can easily do 11 inch. I've checked all my blocks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to trim all of my blocks down to 11 inch. And then the tops, which have not been sewn all the way down to the edges, then I'm going to trim the tops down to 10 and a half just to get them out of my way. But for right now, I'm going to trim down to 11 inch so I can see what I'm working with. And I'm checking that the backing is going to cover and it will. So I've got that. And now I'm going to go here, flip the block and go down to the 11 inch mark on bottom and right side. And I am left handed, so that's what I'm doing. You're going to do it the other way if you are a righty. Now I'm going to fold back the edges and I'm going to trim one quarter inch off. So I'm just nicking off a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. And you can actually leave it like that if you want. So way you know you're backing in, your batting is safe. Checking to make sure what side I've trimmed and what side I've not. And I have one side left to trim. So that is how we are going to get all of our blocks ready. So our blocks will finish at 10 inch because right now they're measuring 10 and a half. We need that extra batting and the extra backing to flip them over and join them. I'm going to trim everything down. I'm going to proceed with the entire stack and I'm going to trim initially to 11 inch and then I'm going to be folding back the backing and the batting out of my way and then trimming one quarter inch off each side of the top. And I will come back when we have all of our blocks trimmed so I just wanted to come back and show you that your blocks can be pretty, pretty screwy. So you fold it back and you look at where your backing is so that you know you've got coverage. And sometimes you're going to have to be kind of crooked to make sure you get all 11 inches in here. But I have 11 here, here, all the way. So it's okay if, you're, if your block is cockeyed before you trim it down. And you can see I got coverage on the back. So I stick the so I stick the 11 down here on the corner and make sure I've got the coverage and I do. So continue cutting them down to 11 inch and then we will trim the tops by a quarter of an inch on each side. So you can see here I've got quite quite a divot there and I can see that I've got a full coverage backing down here. So I'm going to put 11 inch safely on the block and I can see I've got coverage here and coverage here is a little shy so I'm going to trim it here and now I'm going to get that 11 inch in there safely and I definitely have coverage on the back. Lining up 11. 
So continue on until you have all your blocks done. This is the last block that I'm trimming. And again, I trimmed initially down to 11 inch just to make sure I'd have enough space everywhere. And I am lining it up on my cutting mat. And I'm just using a pair of scissors to hold it in place. And I am trimming off one quarter inch from the top. There we have it. Okay, all of our blocks are trimmed to the correct size and they are 10 and a half. So when we sew them together, they will end up being 10 inch. This is the layout that I am going with. Now that you know how the layout is going for me, then you can, you can do the layout however you decide and then when you're ready take one row at a time and bring it over to the machine and we will start sewing them together. I have my walking foot on my 301. Off to my left here I have row one and I have these pins that have numbers on them. So I'm going to take out one through five. So I have five rows and I have the top left block right here. So I'm going to stick a pin. So I I am taking block number one and block number two, putting them right sides together, and I'm folding back the batting and the backing, and we are just going to sew the top layers together using a one quarter inch seam. So those two blocks are sewn together on the top, and now we're going to move back over to the ironing table. I am going to iron this seam to one side, and then we'll move on to the second step. So I ironed this seam this way, so I'm going to want my batting seam to be over this way. I can see through this to the shadow, and it is one inch. I'm going to take this, and I'm very carefully going to trim off one inch. I'm going to look under here and make sure a zillion times to make sure that there is nothing important underneath this here ruler because that would not be good. Now I'm gonna make this slightly shy of an inch because I think it'll work better. And again, we're remembering that this is top left corner. Now we have our batting butting up together and I am using a nylon batting tape. This will melt if you hit it with your iron, so don't do that. Once one side of the tape has a bumpy texture to it and that is the glue. So we're not going to touch this with the iron. We're gonna fold these over, take it over to our iron. And if we look here, here is the seam where we joined our block. So that's the top. And now the batting has been joined offset. So I'm going to mark a half of an inch and I'm going to press that over. When we stitch in the ditch on the front, we will catch the very edge of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some fusible in here to hold it together. And I'm gonna iron that down. And now I am going to fold this over and iron that down. That is stuck down and it will stay, stay down until we have time to quilt it. You can see that I've only quilted in the centers. So, and you can also see here that this is offset from the batting join. So when we quilt all the spots that have not been quilted, everything will be secured down. I am going to sew the next one on, and again, we're going to do right sides together and pull back the batting and the backing and sew a scant quarter inch on just the top. Then we come over here and we look at the back and we trim down the batting and we offset it from the top stitch seam from the top side seam. And then we add a little bit of either fabric glue, washable fabric glue, or a little bit of fusible, just a few dots, and then we join them together. And that holds things together until we have time to quilt it. This is block one, as you can see by the little pin. And now we're gonna flip this over. And again, we're doing just the top layer. You can even pin this back if it makes you more comfortable. And we're going to join scant quarter inch seam. We'll do the next one, block number four. 
All right, that is our first row as far as the tops are concerned. So now it's back over to the ironing table. And again, we're going to press this to one side and the batting will get trimmed on the opposite side. And then on the opposite side, once more, we lay over the backing and use a touch of fusible. And it seems like it wants to lay that way and that's fine by me. All right, so I'm going to lay the batting over this away. Once again, we're trimming an inch off. We're cutting an inch off of this side of the batting. Now, if you don't have this tape, you can just use some very large basting stitches. It's not mandatory that you have this tape. And I will include the link to my Amazon store in the description iron that down now. So I'm going to mark a half inch line on here and I'm going to iron that down. Cool off for a second. I would highly suggest that you use a Teflon pressing sheet so you don't get any goop on your iron. So that's what our backing is going to look like. That is row number one. I'm going to put this back on the design wall and I'm going to do the same exact thing with all the rest of the blocks. We have a total of 20 blocks is for me. I am doing a four by five layout to make a baby quilt or a small lap quilt or whatever floats your boat. So I'm going to put this back on the design wall and I'm going to do this four more times with the rest of the rows. Okay, so here we are. I'm sorry I had to switch over to my cell phone to record this. My mic died uh, and it didn't give me an SOS message that it was dying. So I did three video files with no audio. So we're doing it again. We have our blocks sewn together into rows and unfortunately, I have to stop here. My back just can't take any more. It's been a very, very hectic week trying to get my new sewing table built. And uh, my back my back just won't let me do any more. I've got to quit for the night. I absolutely love the colors. And you can take any CAFE collection, any CAFE fabric. It could be 10 years apart and the colors will still work together. You just, I, I can't get tired of these colors. These are the colors that God gave us in the rainbow and I can't get enough of it. These are my happy colors. I just love bright, bright rainbow colors. So we are going to leave it here for the evening. And I want to thank you ever so much for joining me. And I want to thank you all for your subscriptions and for your likes and for your comments. Your comments just make my day. I so enjoy getting to know each and every one of you. And it's just such a joy for me to go through my comments and respond to you. And on that note, I would invite you to come on over to coffee. That is ko-fi.com forward slash 70 acre studio. And I've got lots of patterns there. I've got lots of free patterns there. And I have subscriptions if you are interested in supporting my work. And I've got some quilts. And of course, if you're a member, you have access to all my birds. And next year, I'm going to be doing something different. So I'm starting to wrap this one up. When we come back next time, we'll be sewing our rows together. And then we will be doing the border in the following video. That will be, I'm thinking, a picket fence style. And again, that will be quilt as you go. And when we are done sewing that on, the quilt will be finished. Thank you so very much for watching. So I'll see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio next time when we sew these rows together. Please have a very, very blessed day, a very, very blessed week ahead. I love you all so very much. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.